So something I hear artists say a lot is that they want to create realistic art, but they also want to enjoy the process and not be stressed out. That's really what I focused on in this tutorial, creating this semi-realistic art that's vibrant and colorful and creative and really having fun in the process. Hello creatives, my name is Lauren Elizabeth with Lauren Elizabeth Animal Art and I help beginner through advanced level artists reduce stress while mastering pet and wildlife acrylic art. So today as we paint this vibrant fall moose painting, I'll teach you how I paint antlers, I'll teach you little tips about how to choose reference photos, and also I'll challenge you in a very good way of how to create this creative, expressive, fun art. And as always, the link to the traceable printout for this painting and all the other links are in the description box below. But guys, without further ado, let's get painting. So if you've never used a traceable before, I have a link down below to a video showing you how to use it. So let's go through these colors real quick. I'm going to use white, violet, yellow ochre, burnt umber, orange, followed by phthalo cyan and blue, fluorescent pink, this is by Liquidex, grass green, cadmium yellow, and later on I'll be adding permanent red and raw sienna. Now grab a palette knife if you have one. We're going to be mixing up our colors, two of them. Yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, and fluorescent pink with white. In a little bit, I'll be pulling in that white. So that's lots of yellow ochre, lots of cadmium yellow, a little bit of fluorescent pink, and you'll see I'll pull in lots of white. I'm aiming for a very deep yellow that's bordering orange. I kind of want to pull out those blues in our mousse with those oranges that complement it, and the violets by keeping it also looking very yellow. So try and find that balance. We want a lot of this because we're gonna be filling in quite a bit of our background, and then we'll move on to our green. And by the way, if you're a slower painter, I've slowed the footage down quite a bit for this one. And even so, if you need to pause and then play again, so be it. I wiped off my palette knife. I'm grabbing grass green and cadmium yellow. Again, that's cadmium yellow and grass green. And this won't be the last one. We're actually next going to combine these two colors in a separate pile to help us smoothly transition from our green to our yellow. All right, so in a separate pile, I'll grab a little bit of the green, a little bit of the yellow, mix them together so we have that joiner color. Now, if you're new to my channel, my absolute favorite brushes that I use for basically everything, my commissions, my masterclass tutorials, my YouTube channel, is the Arteza Variety Pack. These brushes are durable. They have lasted me for years. They spread the paint so smoothly. And so that's why I teach with these brushes and I have a link to them below. But with my size six Arteza flat brush, we'll be starting at the top with our darkest green. Now this is what I like to call the paint warm up where we get our minds and bodies ready for a creative mental rest, allowing us to disconnect from distractions. I encourage you right now to take in four deep breaths, a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Thank you. 
Now, if you're a fast painter and or you're a little impatient like I am, where we transition to the yellow is right where it starts to curve around the nose. So we're gonna work our way to the left and don't forget about your sides if you're using a canvas. Now, everything I paint has inspiration from lessons I'm learning in my faith or a Devo or a Bible verse. And for this one, Thanksgiving has been on my mind. In our house, we call it Thank You Day. And that's why Philippians 4, 6 is perfect for this one. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. If it matters to you, it matters to God because he made you. My children teach me so much and give me insights into how the Lord feels about me. Just how my daughter will approach me with any request. She wants to go to Paris. She wants a unicorn. She is angry. She's so happy. She's thankful. Just everything she's feeling and thinking and what she wants, she shares without any hesitations and fully expecting me to provide in some way, shape, or form. And this is exactly how we can approach our Father in Heaven in prayer. Now moving for a little bit to my size one Arteza round brush to get in and around these pointy antlers as well as this small little triangular gap in between the ear and the very large antler you'll see in a moment. Now I talk about this quite a bit so I'm sorry if I sound like a broken record but for those of you that are new I apply many many layers especially to the background to get it like fully covered a rich vibrant pigment and with green especially it can be thin it can look choppy no matter what paint brand you're using this is just the case so don't expect this first layer to be perfect we're gonna apply a couple more later so that's also why you want to make sure you keep your colors damp or covered you can come back later to your paint by covering it with aluminum foil or saran wrap if you seal this well, it should last for about three days and still until it starts to get sticky and even dried. 
All right, so next I'm gonna to move to the medium color where we mixed a green with our deep yellow. I'm moving to my size five Arteza angle brush. I'll start blending into that green and then working down. All right, so here's a fun moose fact for you. That flap of skin that we see hanging under the moose's chin, that's called a dew lap. It's also known as a bell. And we will work a little bit more with this color under that and then switch immediately to our deep yellow. Now I also have a challenge for you. Starting now, I challenge you to paint loosely, to not try to blend things perfectly, to allow things to be a little misplaced and abstract. Use your brush in all different ways. For example, in some areas, I'm gonna position my angle brush upright. So I'm uh, working along that flat edge, up and down into that medium green. And then some areas I'm using wispy, thick brush strokes that I can really see the texture. So practice painting loosely here because we'll definitely be using it when we paint the fur on the moose. All right, so once you're finished the first layer of our background, let that dry for about five, 10 minutes. Maybe stand up, rinse out your water, wash your brushes, and then we'll go right back to these colors again for a second coat. Okie dokie, so here I go back with my size five Arteza angle brush, and I'll just apply a second layer, a second coat, 
to every part, the dark green at the top, the medium greenish yellow, and then the deep yellow at the bottom. But I just wanna say to give you a heads up, in the upper right hand corner, we will be going deeper, darker green there, adding a bit of blue. And at the bottom over top the yellow, while it's damp, I'll be pulling in a little bit of some green into that area. All right, so after you've applied a coat, a second coat of the yellow, I'm gonna pull in our darker screen and with vertical brush strokes, I'll loosely add that in. I'll also work some of the yellow into that medium green. All right, so you notice I didn't add a second coat to the upper right corner. I'm gonna pull in phthalo cyanin blue into some of my darkest green 
and I'll start blending that, keeping it real dark to the right uh, of the antlers at the top, and then blending that into some of the dark green. Now, if you're running out of that dark green, you can mix that up now. That's what I had to do later. That was with grass green and cadmium yellow. You want to have that separate color so we can smoothly blend that to the left. All right, you lovely people, we're gonna finish up the background here and we wanna let it dry again for about five, 10 minutes until it gets tacky or better yet dry. And then we'll move on to the eyes. Now, I don't know about you, but I am a fall fanatic. I love fall. I love all the colors. I love all the animals, everything about it. And then what it leads to the holiday season. And so that's what I'm about to do is do a huge holiday sale. I actually recently opened my Etsy shop with all my prints and a lot of my art accessories like a laptop sleeve, framed prints, bags, notebooks, along with my colorful, cheerful cat dog and wildlife fine art prints and my woodland animals card packs with my moose, a bear, two fawns, a fox and hedgehog, many of which will be on sale, guys. So I have a link to my Etsy shop down below. But without further ado, let's get back to this moose. All right, so before we get started on the eyes, nose, and mouth, I'm gonna add some black to my paint palette. I'm gonna go to a detail brush so we can get that tiny, tiny little eye, which by the way, you don't wanna apply unless your background is dry or nearly dry. So I'm gonna go in with my Arteza size one liner brush and just with a little bit of black on the tip of my brush, I'm gonna carefully outline that small little eye and then I'll carefully fill in the pupil. You know, it always amazes me animals like the moose and bears, how they manage with such enormous bodies and the tiniest little eyes. So then I'll move on to filling in that nostril and moving upwards along the line of that nostril, as well as filling in the mouth. Now, just a heads up, we actually move back to that deep yellow that we were using for the background. That's what we'll use to fill in the iris, the colored part of the eye, once the black has dried. Now I'm gonna wash up my brush thoroughly, making sure that I dab it damp 
not dry and not sopping wet, I'm gonna pick up the smallest amount of our deep yellow and fill in the rest of the eye. All right, creatives, are you warmed up yet? Because we now are gonna mix up lots of colors for the antlers. It's gonna get a little bit more difficult with blending and applying paint to the tiny little areas with our detail brushes. So let's move on now with our palette knife if you have it, and we'll start mixing. Now this is also where I'm gonna add my raw sienna, which I'll mix raw sienna with yellow ochre, our first color. I'm gonna make room on my paint palette and that's raw sienna with yellow ochre. All right, next color is yellow ochre and white. That's lots of yellow ochre and white. Now when I'm going through colors, I'll number them. So the raw sienna and yellow ochre mixture is number one. Color mixture two is the yellow ochre and white. Let's move on to color mixture three. This is violet and yellow ochre. That's violet and yellow ochre. Color mixture three. Next color is violet with burnt umber. That's violet with burnt umber, number four. Now I have to pull in those fall red somehow, so I'm gonna add permanent red to my paint palette and mix a bit of that with orange. Sneaking in a bit of our color mixture one, the yellow ochre and raw sienna mixture. So again, that's a little bit of color mixture one, permanent red, and a bit of orange. So this is gonna look like a vermilion orange, real deep. Now again, if you wanna paint at a different session, different time, definitely seal your paint palette with saran wrap or better yet, aluminum foil. I find that better. So I'm using my size one Arteza round brush. I'm going in with my color mixture five, our deep orange red, and I'm gonna start working on the antlers closest to us, the little thin ones, and I'm working, if you look closely, on the left side, our main light source is coming from above, meaning the bottom of the antlers is gonna be the darkest. So we're applying our dark values first. So I'll leave the right side white. We'll paint that in with a different color. Now this isn't actually our darkest value. It's one of the darks, but we're gonna go even darker after this. And we need this color to be damp on our canvas in order to blend it in. So just keep that in mind as you're creating a pace for yourself that's not too fast, not too slow, but just right. So you still have time to work in more colors before it dries. So when it comes to painting antlers, I really recommend you cover up the majority of the antlers with the dark or even dark to medium value like we're doing right now. Then you blend in the lightest values 
and then you add the medium values to give it that texture. Now I chose this photo because of the great contrast on these antlers. You have some real light highlights and some real dark shadows. This is just one of the things I'm looking for when I'm searching for reference photos, that real strong contrast, which helps me find my colors a lot easier. The other thing I'm looking for when I'm searching for reference photos that I touched on at the beginning is a well-defined light source. I don't want to see light hitting the entire animal. I prefer to see the light hitting one side or two sides real strong. And then the opposite side would be dark. The other thing I look for is a blurry or less focused background. I really want to have that animal be crisp and clear so I can really get all the details. I'm less concerned about that detail for the background unless I'm doing a more elaborate background like I my fox and hedgehog. I pulled in about seven photos for the background of that one painting. All right, so in a moment, I'm going to go straight into Color Mixture 4. Here, I recommend you watch me first before giving it a go. I won't cover up all the vermilion, but I'll cover up quite a bit of it, blending from the bottom of the antler underneath it up. So these two pointy antlers angled up and to the left will get a lot of this darkness, but less on the right side. I'm also bypassing that white outline we left, and as I move to the right, I'm adding more texture, leaving gaps of the vermilion, the reddish orange, so it looks like grooves and bumps on this antler. And then in a moment, while this is all still damp, I'm going to wash up my brush and I'm going to move to color mixture one and two. I know that's a little confusing. So if in a separate pile, you want to mix those two colors together just in a separate pile, that's what I'm using to fill in much of the leftover white on this antler. Now you'll notice as I'm painting, I'm actually not filling in all the white. That I have a reason for. My method here is to join the vermilion with this yellow with a separate color so that I can create this very subtle edge you see between the very top of the antlers where it's getting the light and the bottom side. And that's why I want to join it with a separate color in a little bit. But first, let's just focus on this yellow ochre mixture here. All right, creative. So for our next color that we're going to use to fill in the rest of the white on this antler is number five, our color mixture of permanent red, yellow, and orange. 
with a bit of color mixture one. And this is what I'll use to join the yellow ochre on the top and the vermilion on the bottom while still creating a subtle edge that we see in a reference photo. Antlers are almost never smooth. If you've ever held one before or seen antlers up close, there's texture, there's bumps, there's grooves, and we wanna capture that with our paint. So next I'm going to switch off between color mixture five and four and carefully blend some more texture, some more darkness in between where we have that edge I was talking about and touching up any of the vermilion areas that I want to keep or darkening up any of the darker violet areas that need to be darker. That's what I'll do right here. And in case you forgot, color mixture four is our burnt umber with the violet. That's the darkest violet on our paint palette right here. And color mixture five is our permanent red orange with our dark yellow ochre mixture. All right, so take this time to do any touch-ups that you need to on this right antler. In a moment, we'll move on to the left antlers, repeating almost the exact same thing. All right, so we're gonna be working on some very thin, pointy antlers here. So if you wanna move to a smaller, thinner brush, I eventually decide to change myself, or you can continue using the brush that you've been using. We're gonna jump straight into Color Mixture 5, our vermilion, and we're gonna leave that white outline where it's facing the light source. So just on these far left, pointy, long, thin antlers, we'll work this on the left side. And I find that the far left antler that's just peeking out from behind this one my size one liner brush from the Arteza Detail Brush Pack did a great job. So I get the Arteza Variety Pack with a variety of different brushes and the Detail Brush Pack. This is what I use for everything I paint pretty much. And both of those are linked down in the description box. Now don't worry so much about this being perfect. We can always paint over any mistakes here in this tiny, tiny little area with our light yellow. So no fretting here. All right, so with a clean, damp brush, I'm using my size one liner brush. We're gonna now fill in the white over top of these antlers we just applied vermilion to on the far right now.
Now before that red orange dries, we're gonna blend in a little tiny bit of color mixture four, our brown and violet mixture. This is definitely where you're gonna need your detail brushes because we wanna carefully do this on the furthest left side, carefully around that background, but not going over all the red nor the yellow. All right, so let me quick walk you through what we'll be doing on this large part of this left antler. We still see a little bit of a medium value bordering the outer part of this antler, not all of it. So that's where I'll use the vermilion, our medium to dark value. Then I'll apply a pink blending into that so it softens the darkness and then we'll lighten it up with white. So watch my placement as I go in with Color Mixture 5 with my liner brush in just a couple areas, and then we'll fill in the rest of it with a beautiful, vibrant, pinkish yellow color. All right, so get ready to mix one of my favorite colors. I pretty much add this color into all my pieces. I'm gonna mix the yellow ochre mixture, number two, a little bit of that with fluorescent pink, the one I get from Liquidex, as well as white. So again, that's a little bit of color mixture two, a little bit of fluorescent pink, and lots of white because this is getting a lot of light. So if you watch me, I fill in the rest of the white, I blend into some of those vermilion areas, but on the top area, I don't fill that area in. I work more to the right of it. We still have a little tiny bit of shadow on the left side of those pointy antlers. Now here's the little mistake that you can make if you're not careful. Where it joins with this yellow ochre mixture on the top of those far left antlers, this value is almost identical to this pinkish yellow. So that's why in a little bit, while this is wet, we go on with white to lighten it up. That way these values aren't competing and the viewer can tell that this is further in the distance and getting more light.
All right, so while this is still damp, I wanna blend in straight white. This is just the titanium white, the golden brand paint that I love that's quite liquidy. It blends in so nicely without any clumps, and I'll do that carefully around those other pointy antlers. So in case you missed it, that's golden brand fluid titanium white. That's actually the only golden brand paint I buy. I just get my white that way, and then the rest, I buy the Master's Touch paint and some Liquidex paint. These are the brands that I highly recommend for the colors, the richness, the creaminess. I also get a lot of heavy body paint in these brands, and the price is right. All right, so I like to squeeze in an intermission or two in my tutorials so that you can reset those eyes so you're not being overly critical. It's also a great time to refresh your water, clean your brushes, stretch, and then I'll see you in a minute. All right, so here we go for round two of our color mixing. We will still be using some of those colors that we mixed uh, at the beginning, but we're gonna mix a lot more colors for the fur. So grab that palette knife if you have one. We're gonna mix phthalo cyanin blue with violet and white. That's phthalo blue, violet, and white. Now we'll pull a little bit of that color into the next one, and then I'll add raw sienna and burnt umber. So that's raw sienna and burnt umber with a little bit of that indigo that we just mixed up. So we just mixed up color mixture six, and now we're on to seven. Now for color mixture eight, I'll use phthalo cyanin blue and burnt umber. That's phthalo blue and burnt umber. And hopefully you have room. The next color, color mixture nine, is violet with phthalo cyanin blue. Nothing else except violet and phthalo blue. All right, so I will move to my size six Arteza flat brush. We'll go back to that. And I had given you some practice on painting loosely and being okay with those imperfections to prepare us for this part, the mousse fur. This part is very expressive, and I promise you it'll look a little different than mine, and that's okay. We're gonna go to color mixture eight, and we'll start on the darkest parts of the mousse on that shoulder first. I'll fill in just the front of the shoulder, then the entire dewlap area underneath the chin, and then work below that, connecting this neck to the front of the shoulder. We're looking for all the areas where it nearly looks black on the mousse. We wanna lay down our first layer of dark values, then medium values, then light values, then really hone in on texture, but we can still create some of that texture in even in the first layers. Now this distance from the mousse that the 
photo is taken is pretty far away. So we really don't see much texture except for those medium values where they join and blend into the lighter fur. We still do see some over top the top area of the dewlap and even on the, the bridge of the nose. So I'm mostly just filling in with this color, but the next colors will build up with a little bit more of our thin line, clusters of lines as we paint over the white and also get that fur texture. Deserve a thing, don't deserve a thing. You opened up your arms, gave it all away. It's your grace, grace, grace over me. Oh, I fail, oh, I fail time and time again. But it never stops you. Never stops you. Oh, you loved me, loving me to the end. And you're making me new. Heals my heart, saved my soul. It's the air I'm breathing. Your grace, grace, grace over me. It's your grace, grace, grace over me. Yeah. And I don't deserve a thing. I don't deserve a thing. You opened up your arms, you gave it all away. It's your grace, grace. So I'm going to turn my brush so I'm using that flat edge to define the top of that shoulder. And then I'll go straight working below this antler where we see a really strong shadow. I just paint the area that's about the thickness of my brush and a little bit below the moose's eye, which is where I stop there with this color for now. I set this brush aside and move to my Arteza size one round brush and I jump to color mixture seven. This brown is just slightly lighter in value and I'll start focusing on the blending and applying those dark values to the face and neck. In this area around the jaw, around the snout, there's a lot of values that are so similar, but just slightly different. So it helps me if I focus on one area at a time, one small area, and I just work with what I know. So I'm gonna work in this area around the eye, around the jaw, and around the neck as if I'm putting a puzzle together. One puzzle piece after the next helps me understand where to place the next one. So with this brown, I'll work in front of and right below the eye. I'll work down, painting down along that jaw. Mm -hmm. 
Now I want to lift up that darkness a bit more. We see a strong shadow on this jaw, so I'm going back to color mixture 8 to pull that up, blending that up, and then I'll move back to color mixture 7. And that's when I noticed this subtle highlight above at the bottom of the jaw on the top of the dewlap and I'm going to go to color mixture six and I know this looks really light but when we blend it into the very dark blue it takes it from a vibrant medium value to a much darker dark to medium value that works just perfect and this is exactly how I discover colors and I learn what the next puzzle piece is so I take this color that I just mixed up color mixture six with seven and I start working into that white but connected along the neck to that dark brown blue mixture. So to make this easier on you if you want to mix up a little bit of color mixture six seven and eight in a separate pile that's what I'm using right now. So I want this area right below the jaw to be a little darker, so I'm pulling in color mixture 8 just a little bit. So here what I'm doing now is blending a little bit into that indigo with color mixture 7 and working up into that white. And that's when I see a subtle light value defining the back of the jaw using color mixture six. Now, if this area is dry for you at this point, no worries, just add a dab of the dark brown color mixture seven. Now that's when I discovered that this color is the perfect medium value base for the curved part of the nose. It's not too light, it's not too dark, it's right there in the middle. So I'm adding color mixture six for a short strip at the top until I blend in more of color mixture seven as I work down and join it to the bottom brown area along the jaw and the front of the eye. All right, so here I go with that color mixture seven. Now you know how you tell a dog to leave it so they don't eat something that they shouldn't be? Well, I'm gonna tell you that right now. So if you see tons of detail and you're so tempted to wanna to paint it all in right now, leave it, my friend, because we don't need to do that right now. We're just focusing on covering up that white, but later we will add those details. So leave it. Now I'm gonna mix up a color here that we'll add in front of the eye, and that's a tiny bit of seven and raw sienna. And I'm adding in a lighter brown to lighten up this darker brown so we can slowly get to those highlights on the head. Now with a little bit of that color left on my brush, I'll then pull in raw sienna and yellow ochre. Now you know where else this color value works great? That highlight around the nostril. I'll fill in a small oval around that nostril 
and then also add it around the upper part of the lips. Now you'll notice here I won't fill in the entire area around the lips, just the upper part. I'll wash out my brush now and move to our Deep Indigo color. That's Color Mixture 9. Now if you watch me first, you'll notice I'll fill in the front of the lip and then blend it carefully into the yellow and then the late blue and then the dark brown. So next what I'm going to do, while both those areas have a fresh coat of paint, I'm then going to go back with that previous color. It was raw sienna, yellow ochre, and a little bit of color mixture 7, that brown, just a tiny bit. I'll go back and blend into those violet and blue areas, starting in the yellow area. I want to try my best to smooth out this area around the lips so it's from that dark indigo to the light yellow, yellow ochre and raw sienna mixture. And if you need to here, like I did, go back to your black and separate those lips so you can create that line for the mouth. And just for a quick little dab or two, I go back to color mixture nine and I darken up a few more areas with our deep indigo. All right, so I'm gonna wash up my brush, pat it damp in a separate pile. Next to it, I'm gonna add a little bit of white to color mixture six, adding a light thin strip along the snout that goes all the way up until we get to the white left over on the forehead. Now you may need to switch out your water, refresh it. We're kind of doing a lot in this tiny little area on the forehead, lots of different colors. So after I wash off my brush, I'm gonna switch to color mixture two. And if you don't have that, that's just yellow ochre and white. And you'll see me here also blending in some raw sienna and yellow ochre as well. So I'll start from the left on that back eye, move up and to the right, and that's when I start blending in our raw sienna and yellow ochre, which is actually color mixture one. I made more work for myself than I needed to, so if you wanna make it easier on you, just use color mixture one.
Now what I'm going to do to join these yellow ochre, raw sienna, and a little bit of white area on the left to that dark brown area is I'll just pull in a little bit of Color Mixture 7 into this so I can blend that and join these areas so it's this nice smooth transition. And now it's just Color Mixture 7 that I'm blending to the right. Now you want to learn a cool trick? You may have seen me already do this in my tutorials, but if not, it's really easy. You wash at your brush, you keep it damp, not sopping wet and not dry, and then you go in and blend the areas in a tiny area that you want to blend. You don't need to add more paint. You can just use the moisture left on your brush to blend that in. So that's what I'm doing carefully. I am also adding a little bit more of color mixture too. Now you want to make sure that you're indicating to the viewer that the eyebrow is behind the snout. So make sure that these areas are separate. I just brought up a little bit of the light indigo up a little bit further. So that's color mixture six. And that line we want super thin and I thinned it out with more of color mixture two. And that's when I noticed that the value in front of the eye needs to be a smidge lighter. So I took Color Mixture 2 with a bit of raw sienna, blended that from top down very carefully, not adding too much, and then added a bit more texture to the top of the eye. All right, so you ready to paint those ears? I'm gonna mix a little bit of color mixture two with one. You can see that I remix it, and we're gonna fill in the majority of the ear, the far left one that we can see most of, leaving a white border outline on the far left. Now, of course, I altered the reference photo for these ears a bit, but if the ears were positioned this way, we would have a, a little bit of darkness on the lower right of this left ear. So I go in with color mixture seven. You don't need much. I just darken that area up. I wash up my brush thoroughly, make sure it's damp, and then I pick up color mixture two and I fill in that white border. Now the back of that ear still isn't quite dark enough, so I'll pick up color mixture nine, adding that once more to this lower right side back of the ear, blending that out. All right, now for the other ear, we wanna make sure our brush is clean and damp. Now don't let me make this more complicated for you in terms of color mixing, but it's just simply color mixture one with color mixture two. But the key here is only using that for the outermost part of the ear and then right where it connects to that right large antler, I'll pull in more of our raw sienna to very subtly separate that ear from this large antler. That way we don't confuse the viewer so it doesn't look like just one wonky looking antler. So here's where I'm just going in with raw sienna. Mm -hmm. 
but I think it could still go a little darker. I knew I needed a color that was a little more violet to help balance out all those yellows in this area. And so I pulled in color mixture four. Now there's just a tiny little area of that right ear poking out from behind that antler and I'll fill that tiny area in with color mixture two. And then what I'll do is just a few more touch-ups before my colors on the moose face dries, including just adding highlights, just very small amount on my brush right here to the nostril area and the lip area with color mixture two. Now for this next part, we'll be filling in the rest of the white and you'll see I jump from one color to the next without even washing out my brush. So colors will mix and it goes a little fast. So you might wanna watch me before you try it. I'm going in with color mixture two, starting on the very top of the neck, working down, jumping straight to color mixture nine. I'll work this down along the curve behind the jaw and we're doing this loosely we want to be expressive here. Don't try and blend things perfectly. Let it sit for a bit, and if you really don't like it, you can make those changes at the very end. Now the next color that I'll work down from that, I wanna mix up, and that's white with a bit of color mixture three now. So that's white with a bit of color mixture three. Now I'm still using my size one round brush, and I wanna pay more close attention to the direction the fur is going and the length. So I wanna cluster lines together, but also cover up that white, and my brush strokes are gonna get a bit longer as well. Now, do you remember when I leave these random white gaps? I have a reason for that. I always have this method in my brain as I'm painting, and I'll go back to our dark blue violet to fill in that area and bring it down to the brown. All right, so here I go without even washing up my brush. I'm going to color mixture nine. Now, side note here, we're jumping from color to color and acrylic paint dries pretty quick. So that paint will dry to the bristles and we wanna create clusters of lines, fine lines to create that fur texture. So anytime it starts pulling on your canvas, your brush, or it becomes sticky, then you need to wash out your brush. Now, if you're ever not sure about the correct value, just test it out. And that's what I did here. I mixed up color mixture one with color mixture seven. That's the brown with our yellow ochre and raw sienna mixture. And I just put it on my canvas. I look at it. I see if it's the right value. If not, I can add a little bit more darkness right while it's wet, or it can add a little bit of lightness like white or another lighter color to lighten it up. We're not stuck in anything we do with acrylics. And that's when I see it wasn't quite right, but I can still use it and blend in color mixture nine with color mixture six. You can see I'm doing patches here of color, clusters of lines closely together. Then I jump to eight and seven. That's color mixture eight and seven. But as I move further down, I'm still using eight and seven, but more of eight to get it a bit darker. I know that was all a bit fast, but I assure you the next steps, we stick with one color for a pretty long time before jumping to another one. And that color is color mixture number one. And we'll just work up the neck. I'll even start working all the way up the very top of the back of the neck. Now with this color, I'll be a bit more sporadic, leaving more gaps in between these clusters of lines. And you see how loose I'm getting? Just be free as you're applying brush strokes. You don't have to think much about it. We're gonna make this all come together at the end.
All right, so we are gonna be switching colors here. I'll be using color mixture six. That's our light indigo, and you will see there's gonna be a little bit of greens mixing on our canvas. In some areas, I'll leave it, and then other areas, I'll apply more of the indigo. And then in some areas, I'll leave very large gaps, but all keeping the same width and length of each line. All right, then if you need to, make sure you wash off your brush. We'll move to color mixture eight and fill in the rest of the white we have left over in that right corner. But we'll not actually stop there. I'm gonna continue on with this color, color mixture eight, with more clusters of lines working up the neck and even at the very top of the neck where we have that real dark brown area. All right, so I'm gonna wash out my brush and then I'm gonna to move to color mixture one. Now for the next few minutes, I'll be filling in the rest of the white on the mousse, which we don't have much, alternating between color mixture one and two, but I'm starting with one. I wanna blend in some of that yellow ochre and raw sienna into some of the indigo and then pull that down along the top of the shoulder. Then here, I'll switch to color mixture two, and at an angle, I'll cluster these lines down. So if you watch me, this will kind of fade down and a little bit curved to the left. Then I'll fill in the rest of the white on the very back of the mousse, and then go back to color mixture one. All right, creatives, so I'm gonna wash up my brush and switch to the Arteza size six flat brush. We're gonna go back to that brush. And once more, it'll feel a little foreign here, just going in with such loose brush strokes, almost making colors look muddy, but you have to go through that ugly phase before you get to that beautiful finished masterpiece. Now I'm gonna use color mixture six, but when I'm using this flat brush, I like to use the flat edge and I also like to use the points of the brush where it creates almost like a triangle. And then we can even twist our brush at an angle so it fills in. So we have those thicker, wider brush strokes that are about the width of the brush itself. So moving now to color mixture eight, I'm gonna turn my brush so I'm using the flat edge. If you even need to push it down on your paint palette to flatten out that flat edge, I do that often. You can do that to help you create those fine lines. And now I'm gonna go back to my older colors that we mixed up at the beginning, color mixture three with white. I washed up my brush before I did this. And then again, I'll position my brush using that flat edge. What I'm doing is smoothing out some of those patches that we created, clustering lines to connect those patches. Now that's not quite light enough, so I'm just gonna add in more white to it. Now, if you've been struggling to get back into your art, or maybe you want to learn the fundamentals and you're beginner, or maybe you're more advanced and you wanna fine tune your animal art skills, 
I've created the Online Animal Art Masterclass. This is a creative and supportive class of artists seeking guidance and or inspiration and or mental balance using pet and wildlife acrylic art. Here, I give my 12-step pet portrait painting process. I cover everything I know about color, the application, blending, layering, mixing, how to choose colors in my creative color guide. It also includes a master animal fur course, going over how I paint pet and wildlife fur with a focus on pet fur. And for beginners, I begin the course going over all the fundamentals, brush technique, terminology, with a wide range of tutorials, both pet and wildlife drawing and painting tutorials. And for creatives who are looking to create a part-time or even full-time income from their pet portraits, I've also included my pet portrait commission course. So if this would bless you or a friend, I have links to the masterclass and more details down below. I'm also doing a huge Black Friday sale. Use the promo code THANKYOUART2023 at checkout on Black Friday to get 15% off the entire masterclass. All right, so back to this mousse. I'm using my size one liner brush. I'm using color mixture six with a little bit of eight. I'm combining those two because this bell, this dewlap is a little dry and I don't want it super bright. I want it to just be a subtle highlight here, right underneath the jaw and less is more here. I'm actually not filling areas in. I'm being intentional with every single line, some small lines placed along the neck and larger clusters right along the back of the jaw. I'll also add just a few lines that are very short and stubby along the snout and by the nostril, as well as short vertical lines right above the lips. And that's when I noticed that the brown to the right of the eye needs to be a bit darker. That shadow needs to come straight down. And that's where I applied Color Mixture 8. And instead of going to the blue mixture like I did, you actually want to move to color mixture 7. We want that more of a dark brown there, not blue. And directly below that, using what's left on my brush, that color that we mixed on our canvas, I'm going to blend that along the jaw, as well as bring that darkness down a little bit more beneath the eye. All right, so I'm gonna slow the footage down quite a bit here because I go a little fast, and but I walk you through step by step. So using my size one liner brush still, I'm gonna add highlights with Color Mixture 2. A lot of what we do in this phase of the painting is dabs, lines, little bits here and there, not like at the beginning when we're filling in a lot of the white. And just a reminder again, less is more and be so intentional with every single little dab. Now this is another one of those times where I recommend you watch first and then try it. But I'm gonna plug back in, I guess paint back in, Color Mixture 5 into the right antler. I really want to pull out those colors in this face. So if I see a little hint of purple, I wanna make it more purple. If I see a little hint here of vermilion, I wanna make it brighter, richer in color.
Now that snout just still needs to be a bit darker. So what I'm gonna do is use a few different techniques here with color mixture eight. I'm gonna apply this between the lips and the nose and just keep working up and around in this area until I have little to nothing left on my brush and then I'm able to just smooth out the paint and so that it's this nice fade. It's not so sharp in this area. Now, what you can also use is your finger to spread it out so it's this nice blend or you can even wash off your brush so it's clean and damp and you can spread that around because the area underneath is likely dry for you and me. A third option, or you can use all of the above, is just to pull in color mixture one and smooth that area out that's right in front of and below the eye. Next, and still using my liner brush, I'm gonna add a tiny, tiny amount of color mixture two to the bridge of the nose. I don't wanna cover up all that light blue or that light indigo, I wanna just do it on the very highest point without going into that background. All right, so we're gonna work on the moose's fur for quite a while here using color mixture nine. I want to create wide gaps in between these strands, these lines, that are about the same length and width. Remember, this mousse is far away, so it's not gonna be real long. It's gonna be shorter because of the distance. And I'm gonna place this around the neck, around the shoulder, and around the back. All right, so just a reminder to be loose, expressive, allow these imperfections to be. You can always alter them and change them at the end if you're not happy with it, but just allow yourself some time to look at it and step back from your painting often. We're gonna put back some yellow, add in some more yellow using color mixture one. Same technique here with the strands of fur. So my technique here isn't relying so heavily on blending, even though that is what's going on. What I'm trying to do is fade from that light fur at the back down along the dark fur along the shoulder and neck with lines, just breaking the area up with lines. And that's when I realized I am not adding enough violet to this painting. It just needs more purple to complement all these yellows. So I'm gonna mix up a brand new color here using violet and white. That's just simply violet and white. I'll use this color to add in more strands of fur over top the yellow we just applied and also creating a lighter base underneath that dark area that we have on the back of the mousse. So my goal here, what I'm trying to achieve is my lightest values on the top of the back, aside from that dark strip, and then medium values, and then the darker values along the lower neck, dewlap, and shoulder. But breaking that up in a very abstract way with all these lines. And we need more darkness in the lower shoulder, so that's why I'm adding color mixture nine. Thank you. 
Moving down along the shoulder, I'll also pull in color mixture 8. Now I like how dark this is in this lower right corner, but we still need a few more blues in there. I'm going to add in more indigo, our blue-violet mixture, that's color mixture 6, sporadically in this area. All right, so using color mixture nine, I'm gonna paint back in that patch of dark fur on the moose's back. And that's when I noticed I left a little bit of green, I guess white, that I need to fill in with green above this area. So I'll do that real quick now. And I know that was a lot, the, all those colors, but we're actually gonna do another layer of the same colors pretty much over top, just fine tuning it even more to tighten these areas up. And then we'll start working on the leaves. So a lot of this will kind of be on repeat, starting with color mixture two. I'm gonna add in more highlights, clusters of lines, same length and width on the back. What I wanna do is when the viewer's looking at that fur, they can still see little bits of violet underneath, little dark values of blue and brown. So now I'll be alternating between color mixture one and two. All right, so here's our reapplication of color mixture six. I'll be adding some highlights using color mixture six and eight on the lower area now of the dewlap. Then I'll add another layer of fur using color mixture six and eight on the shoulder. That's when I see some areas that could go more orange on that right antler. So I'm gonna pull in just orange into a little corner of Color Mixture 5 and just add a few dabs to that right antler. Now I'll also add this very light vermilion, it's more orange now, to the long antler on the left between the light pink area and over top that light yellow. But I still want more of that light yellow at the very end of this antler. So that's when I'll pull in color mixture two.
All right, so I'm going back to my violet, just mixing up some more of violet and white. I'll be alternating between our violet and white and color mixture four. Again, adding more of that violet between the blues and the yellows over top that fur. All right, creatives, so taking breaks is how I stop myself from becoming overly critical and overworking areas, and we'll do that right now. We're gonna take our second intermission here, and then we'll mix up our colors for the leaves, work on that, which is so much fun, by the way, and then we'll do our final touch-ups. All right, so take a break, and I'll talk to you soon. Alright, so now it's time to mix up our colors for the leaves. It's very simple, just cadmium yellow and grass green. Cadmium yellow and grass green, you need lots of this. Now you're welcome to use whatever brush you feel more comfortable doing these tiny little details. I'm going to use my size 1 Arteza round brush and we're going to start with the leaves creating these little almond shape green leaves. Now if you watch me, I'm placing these leaves in a row but not touching at all. I'm placing them as if they're connected to a stem but we'll, we'll add the stems after we paint the leaves. And what really helps me create pointed leaves, so we have two points on both ends, is just a thin brush with a very thin amount of paint on it. And when it starts to get thick, pulling, or sticky on your canvas, then you wash it out and then apply more paint. And I personally find it easier to paint these leaves when I start from the base of the plant and work up to like one single leaf at the end. And I want to make these going off the canvas, or I guess growing up into the canvas. We are the branches. I can do nothing apart from you. The giver of life. The one to hold on to. I can do nothing apart from you. my life 
Now I'll actually be adding a total of six plants at this point. I'll be adding five and then one at the end, but I'm gonna go in with my size one liner brush and just a little amount of paint to fill in each stem. They go off the side of the canvas. So I'll even paint this 
on the canvas side. Just with a steady hand, a very thin amount of paint on the brush, I'll create a straight line. All right, so it's entirely up to you how many plants you wanna add, or even if you wanna add additional plants like flowers or a different type of plant. But in this lower left corner, I will be going back to my size one round brush, starting with the leaves, and then I'll add in a stem. And here I go with my size one liner brush and a little bit of green to paint in that linear stem. All right guys, so now for our final touches. I'm gonna to be adding a color we haven't added yet. This is fluorescent pink and yellow ochre and white that we'll be adding to the fur. Just a few little lines here and there on the back, a medium value just to add more color to this moose fur. Now the mistake I made here is I continued using my size one round brush, but we wanna be using our smallest brushes in this phase of the painting, our liner brushes, our rigor brushes. So I'm gonna recommend the liner brush for this part in the process.
I'm gonna then add in some of Color Mixture 2 into this fur. And I really wanna pull out the pinks in this painting. So I'm just gonna mix up fluorescent pink and white. That's fluorescent pink and white. Now just add a few light dabs with lots of white to the fur, but then I'll add in more fluorescent pink to really bring out those pinks on that left antler. And be careful you don't get the value too dark. We want it to be a very bright pink, but not too dark where we clash with those light values on that antler. All right, so to add back in more dark values where we may have gone a little too crazy with our light or medium values, or maybe we just neglected to add it at all, that's what I'm gonna do with this color, with Color Mixture 9. Now here I made these lines a little too dark. I, I want more of a medium value there. So I softened it, lightened it up with Color Mixture 1. Now at this point, step back from your painting often. That's what I did here. And I realized I think I need another plant It'll be the sixth one that I go in with my cadmium yellow and grass green mixture, creating those leaves first and then the stem. Next, I go in, add a few more highlights around those eyes and on the forehead with Color Mixture 2.
I really bring out those highlights that border both of the ears. Now in the process of painting around the eye, it's very easy to paint over our black outline and the pupil. So with black and my size one Arteza liner brush, I'm gonna carefully reapply that eye outline and fill in the pupil. And just so we don't get that right back ear lost, we have a tiny little corner of it sticking out. I'm gonna use Color Mixture 4 and just with a very thin, dark violet outline, I'll outline that, the outer edge of it. And to really separate that antler from the that ear, I'll use that same color, Color Mixture 4, to carefully outline the bottom of that antler only in that corner. Next, I'm going to move to Color Mixture 8. And with my liner brush, I'm just going to go over, add another layer so it's nice, rich, and dark to the left antlers on the dark values. I'll even darken up the far edge of this tiny little point on this side of the antler. All right, creators, for the last and final step, I'm gonna mix up a super light yellow of lots of white and a tiny bit of yellow ochre, and I'll pull out those highlights that we've already added on top of the antlers, but I'm just gonna add them in again so they're nice and bright. So we have that strong contrast in this painting. And that is it. That is the final step of this painting. Make sure you sign it when you're done. I really hope you learned a ton, you enjoyed yourself thoroughly, and that this has inspired you to keep painting. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure you give it a like. Ask me any questions about this tutorial or anything about animal art for that matter in the comments down below. I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial. Have a blessed thank you day. Bye.